Hi there! It's really important to understand physics when you're trying to build a game. And usually there are three types of physics. Static, the red one right here. Kinematic, the yellow one. And dynamic, the green one. And in this video, I'll do my best to explain and demonstrate this physics. So let's start with static. So something that is stationary in your game, for instance, a wall, that should be done as a static. And the static objects shouldn't move. So let me do a demonstration of collision. So right here, I have four cubes and one of the static objects is moving. And you can see it didn't collide with any of them. It didn't even collide with the dynamic. And this, I think, is very important to know that when you move static object, you might get an unwanted behavior. That collision with a dynamic object, I would expect it to be colliding, but it's not. The reason behind the object not colliding with the dynamic is because by the time the static object reaches that dynamic object, the dynamic object is already in sleep mode and the static object does not wake up the dynamic object to start calculating physics. So that's an important thing to keep in mind with static. So if you're using static objects, you're not supposed to move them. What objects can you move? A kinematic object. Kinematic is really close to a static object, except for kinematic object, you can actually move it. So in your game, you can use it for moving platform or rotating platforms. There is a problem with using kinematic object for a moving platform, and it is when you want to place an object on top of a moving platform and you want it to follow. The kinematic object won't work properly in that case, but I'll do a separate video on that. If we do the same demonstration as we did for the static, we can see it does not collide with a static object, that's fine. Does not collide with the kinematic, but it does collide with a dynamic object. And that's the option that you want to use in your game if you want to move the platforms, but you don't want the platforms to be moved by some other object in your game. So that's the kinematic object. Now the last one that we have is a dynamic object. And dynamic objects, as you can see here, they have the option for calculating for gravity, they collide with each other, and they affect the movement of each other. So let's take a look at demonstration with collisions. And here we have a dynamic object. It collided with the static object and it stopped. Although it's still trying to move, the static object is stopping it from moving on. And that's something that we didn't see with the kinematic object. So let's try a collision with a kinematic object. And it has the same effect as a static object. It's not allowing to pass through. But if we get the kinematic object to move in the opposite direction of the dynamic object, we can see once it collides, the kinematic object is the one that is going to move the dynamic object. The kinematic object ignores any force that is applied on it. And the last one that we have is a dynamic with the dynamic object. And when they collide, the dynamic object just pushes the other dynamic object. So that's the three different types of physics. And if you combine any of them in your game, so for instance, we have this wall. And then if we add dynamic objects in it, the wall is going to constrain the objects from going outside. Now, if we add kinematic objects and then add dynamic objects, you can see that we have interactions there. And we can also add static objects, add some kinematic objects, and also on top of that, add some dynamic objects. And this is the result that you can get. Let's take a look at that again. So right here. Now let's go to Unity and see how you actually set up different types of physics, because that might be not really clear. So right here, I have three different types of physics. If we take a look at the static object, the only thing that we have here is a box collider. And that's an important thing to note that if you just have a box collider on your object, then it's a static object and you shouldn't be moving. Because if you start moving, you might get into those issues when the static object does not wake up a dynamic object, so there's no collision there. So keep that in mind. If an object has only a box collider, it's a static object and it shouldn't be moved unless you really know what you're doing. The next one up is a kinematic object. And in here, it has the box collider, just like in the static object, but it also has a rigid body. Now, adding a rigid body to an object, it doesn't really mean that it's dynamic. In the rigid body, if you take a look, there's an option right here for is kinematic. And that's the check mark that you need to enable for it to be a kinematic object. 
Now the rigid body has other settings on top of it, mass, drag, and angular drag, and use gravity. So when you turn on is kinematic, all of those values actually get ignored. So that's why you can't see the gravity affecting the kinematic object, because as soon as we turn on is kinematic, we have full control of where the object is moving. It will only move by the script that you write. So to make a kinematic object, you add a box collider and then you add a rigid body with is kinematic set to true. And the last one up that I have is a dynamic object. So for a dynamic object, you also create a box collider and you create a rigid body. But is kinematic option is turned off. You can change the settings if you want to make it seem like the objects are in space. You can turn off the use gravity and you can get pretty interesting results with that. And here is a demonstration of that. So I have still gravity on in this one, but this one has gravity turned off and it's floating. But as soon as we collide with that one, it moves to the side as well. So I hope this gives you a better understanding of game physics and the different types and how you set that up in Unity. Click on the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.